Bam! This video is going to cover a detailed build for the Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette released in patch 1.19. At the end of the video, I'll put out a spec sheet so you can easily refer back to them as you're tuning your own car. So this Skyline is fairly nimble, it has decent power and it's a capable racer. It's a pure race car and its representation in game is great, with very unique styling, the stripped down interior, and it sounds amazing. This build factors in a single pit strategy for Sardinia. It's under 800 performance points, but it still can compete. Although after tuning it, it took quite a few times to figure out a consistent strategy to get the win. So while this car can compete at the 800 performance points level, the issue on this particular car is you can't really squeeze much more power out of the car since its upgrades are already installed. And you can only really hit higher PP levels messing with the tire selection and arrow. So in a shorter race or at a lower performance level, this car is great. So full disclosure, this tune will give you an excellent handling race car capable of holding its own at the 800 performance points level, but you won't have the same margin for error as other cars do in this race in the GR1 class like the 787B or the Sauber Mercedes C9. I've tested this car in other 800 performance points level events. It does okay. Um, the bigger issue with the new cafe menus, also released in 1.19, is just that you're competing against cars that are at like GR1 level. So this car is a GR3. It isn't going to be able to hold its own against the Mazda. So the Nissan Skyline Silhouette series was introduced in 1982 and was based on the 6th generation Skyline 2000 RS. Initially they were powered by a 4 valve dual overhead cam engine and it's a pure race car but it maintains its looks and overall appearance of the production model, hence the name Silhouette. The model in Gran Turismo 7 is the 1984 version of the Super Silhouette and its upgrades include a turbocharged 2.1 liter 4 cylinder race engine named the LZ20B. It was known to have flames spit out from the exhaust during racing, and as a result was an instant hit with the fans of the series. Between 1982 and 1984, it racked up an impressive 8 wins. The car was active for 3 seasons, or a total of 19 races, but it was eventually phased out due to regulation changes. This car is sold from the legendary dealership. It's for sale right now at $1.15 million, which is a great price for a planted GR3 car. So pick up this car, you won't regret it. If you're watching this video and you can't pick up the car now, flag it for later. Or if you're watching this in the future, just watch for this car to pop up at the legendary dealership. They all cycle through. I promise that you'll be happy that you did. So let's get into the tune. We get the performance rating up to 785 performance points. We can actually take it to 795 running medium tires versus hards. Max power with the turbo comes in at 743 horsepower. Torque moves up considerably to 528 foot pounds. And weight comes in at 2282 pounds. For the setup, the bulk of the parts are already fitted. It's mostly just some fine tuning. I did add a restrictor and a ballast so I could play with multiple performance levels. Everything else is stock with the exception of the racing transmission and the turbo, but just in case I'll list all the ports at the end of the video for a quick reference when tuning your own car. So to make the car qualify for Sardegna, I adjusted the roll bars and the suspension. I also relaxed the differential a bit, dialed back some of the arrow and adjusted the downforce slightly and added a bit of weight to improve acceleration and give it a 50-50 balance. This car has a natural tendency to oversteer and tightening up the front end helps to make it a bit more manageable. In terms of race strategies, it's pretty simple. Just set it to fuel mapping 6 and pit when needed. You absolutely should be short shifting to maintain as much fuel as possible. On my test runs, I ended up in first place multiple times, but just a few seconds ahead of the nearest competitor, with only 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 remaining on the fuel gauge. I personally ran the race on hards. Mediums are easier, but after 5 laps you'll start to feel the tire wear on each lap. You're aiming to pit at the end of lap 7 so you can just use a fuel top up and in my experience the mediums just don't hold up well enough for each section of that track. When you pit, refuel completely, you'll fall back to mid-pack here again, usually around 7th or 8th, but every other car ahead of you is going to pit one or two times before the end of the race. So focus on getting your best lap times in the 140 range, some clean racing, and ensure you take advantage of them pitting. I'll mention it once more, but you have to short shift, otherwise you will run out of fuel in the last lap. You shouldn't be running this car at high revs as the turbo is maxing your performance in the mid-range anyways. So this car is very unique looking and a capable racer. I don't think it's the best choice for Sardinia, but I wanted to provide a tune that you could use should you want the challenge. Specifically a shorter shack with multiple tight corners, this car would be dominant. I also feel like it would probably be a good Le Mans build, although I will say the fuel economy is not fantastic on this build so far. If you do tune this car for other tracks, be sure to adjust the gearing. I'll work on other potential tunes for this car as well. I like how it handles, I think has a number of potential options. When I have completed those tunes, I'll be sure to link a card here, which you'd see on the top right of the video. Or, if it's not there, just subscribe to my channel and watch for the new video to hit. 
In terms of the livery, this is my own creation. It's open to the public should you want to download it. Feel free to change the decals, color, or whatever you need to make it unique for yourself. I took a relatively new Calsonic livery from the GTR and applied it to the 84 Super, trying to give it a good mix of classical branding and an updated style. All details are in my profile, which is in the description should you need to test it out. So if you enjoy these tunes, please like and comment below. It greatly helps with the channel growth on YouTube. It also helps steer me on what type of content you enjoy and want to see more of. If you're looking to connect with others around gaming in general, feel free to join our 22 Gaming Discord. We're a growing community of like-minded mature gamers covering multiple titles. If you're looking for GT7 info, advice, future tunes, or just conversation, it's a solid community. As always, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.